WNBL history, a proud moment. It's over! An epic game three! And Southside are through to their third grand final in four seasons! Reed swoops on the crowd with massive basket! Reed, you are kidding me. And the fire burn brightest. Townsville are WNBL champions for the fourth time. Welcome to the Bend at Basketball Centre where the Perth Lynx take on the Bendigo Spirit. An undefeated side will be pinned against a winless one. Susie Bakovic medalist Anneli Maley comes up against her old team for the first time. And Kelly Wilson is on the verge of breaking even more records for the Spirit. I'm Julian Montesano and I'm joined by former WNBL assistant coach Mark Alabakov. Mark, I reckon we're in for an entertaining contest tonight. We really are. It's still early days to get a picture of where both of these teams stand throughout the league, but you've got the highest scoring team versus the one that's the lowest in scoring, but a very, very strong rebounding team. It's the battle of pace versus possession play. Perth are undefeated to start the season and sit in second spot on the ladder, while Bendigo is zero from two in seventh spot. What does each team need to do to get the win tonight, Mark? Well, for Perth, they aim to outscore you. So they're the best, uh, highest scoring, I should say, uh, team within the competition. They play at a faster pace. They average 15 more shots than their opponents. So it's all volume and then high percentage layups and threes. They've got three scorers in the top 12, so they've got to leverage that. And they're the best team with their assistance to, uh, to turnover ratio. So playing efficiently and getting the right people shots is going to be the ticket for them. For the Bendigo Spirit, the heat is on. Can they score enough to be able to beat Perth or keep them with a beatable scoreline? Their calling card is possession play. So they're second in the, uh, the competition for offensive rebounds. 33% of missed shots they recover as an extra possession. They need to utilize that to control the tempo of this one to put themselves in a winning position. What they're also going to need to do is to stop Aerie McDonald. She's had an amazing start to the season, leading the league in scoring. She had 29 points, 11 assists and 5 steals against Adelaide just last week, Mark. How good is she? Well, she's the premier player in the competition within these first two rounds. She's number one for scoring. She averages 23 and a half points per game. She can get to the rim. She can shoot the three. But then she makes the right basketball play. So she's second in the league for assists at eight and a half. So from an offensive attack standpoint, she's exactly the perfect fit for this Perth Lynx lineup. First in the competition for assists to turnover ratio. So there's 17 assists to only the four turnovers. She thrives on the big moments and she's a safe set of hands to have the basketball in. Absolutely right, and she'll be a big part in what this Perth lineup does tonight, as will Annalie Maley. I'm sure she'll feature in the starting lineup for Perth as well. And it looks like the starting lineup, according to Perth Socials, will be Good Child, McDonald, Potter, Maley, and Atwell. So Annalie Maley, she looks like she's hit her rhythm straight away in Perth colours, Mark. She's happy, she's thriving, 16 points per game, so that's eighth in the competition, but it's the rebounding, the possession play that's at a, a world-class level. 17 rebounds per game, puts her second in the league. It's the other thing she's doing on top of that, though, that's the separator. Two and a half seals, so she's playing D. Four and a half assists, her getting other people involved. She's top six for both of those two categories. It, that contribution for her has levelled up from the MVP season only two seasons ago. Absolutely, and an MVP in her own right, um, not just in stature, but also in just in the stuff she's done for the league is Kelly Wilson. She's in the starting lineup for Bendigo tonight, along with Wilson, Krakow, Wehrung and Davis. Um, is there anything Kelly Wilson can't do, Mark? I mean, she's on the verge of breaking into second in all-time assists for the league, chasing Christy Harrow. How special would it be if she can get it done? Oh, absolutely. She's a literal superwoman. So 21-plus uh, professional seasons uh, as a, a season pro, but a contributor to very good teams. She can fill her hand with championship rings. And you know, she sat under the learning tree of, uh, at Bendigo of the great Christy Harrower, who's second within that, uh, that league assists record, uh, who she may pass in the coming games. Absolutely. It's going to be a special occasion for Kelly Wilson all weekend. She's on the verge of breaking that assist record and move into second. She needs 12 points to be the 23rd player in WNBL history to score 3,500 points. And she needs four assists to be the third player in WNBL history to record 1,500 assists. So she really is a superwoman. 
as you mentioned, Mark. And walking like a superwoman tonight is Mila Goodchild. She's got the Batman mask on tonight. Um, we'll try and chase out what's happened to her for you. But we assume it's probably a nose knock or some sort of face injury. But I'm sure it won't affect her game. She's had a great start in her new colours as well. She really has. And she's you know an up-and-coming star within this competition. Her three-point shooting is exceptional. Um, we've been able to see her have some fantastic games in seasons prior with the Melbourne Boomers. I'm excited to see where her career goes now that she's going to have more of a role here with Perth. Tipped off, tipped off sorry, in the Bend at Basketball Centre. It's the Lynx up against the Spirit referees tonight. Hugh Starkey, Craig Copes and Carl Easter. And Aerie McDonald getting started as she does so well. But a good reach there from Wilson. And Bendigo playing pretty tight defence. Maley wants to get it going and she'll head to the line for three shots. Kraken not happy with that early call. It's exactly the start that Annalie Maley would have wanted against her old team. And a good way to get on the scoreboard early. I think there's something to seeing the ball go through the hoop, especially in, you know, for her, the psychology of playing against your old team. See the ball go through the hoop a couple of times, it gets you going. And there's a first bucket down there for Maley. As you mentioned, Mark, sporting strong averages already this season. 16 points, 17 rebounds this season already. And also four and a half assists, raking seventh in the league as well. So she's really doing it all. She is, and is the perfect style of player for this Perth Lynx lineup. With the speed and the volume of shots that they want, she's just going to get them extra possession after extra possession. So Bendigo already on the back foot slightly. Wilson, though, wants to change that quickly. Can't quite bank that one in. Potter's there for the rebound. Doesn't pass it into anyone in particular. It allows Crocker to go after it. Wilson now with a bit of space. It's a Kelly Wilson. And now Davis, a nice spin. And the first field goal for Bendigo. Just makes the right play, Kelly Wilson. She's got a sixth sense for the game of basketball. Finds Davis inside. Maley looking for someone else inside. Goes to Potter. Dumps it into McDonald and it's cut off. Luckily Perth get to have another go at it. Great crowd in the house at Bend Out Basketball Centre, as there always is. Friday Night Hoops has become a big occasion over in the West. McDonald leading the league in scoring. Just scoops the pass over to Potter. She just keeps it in. At well. Got rid of her defender, but couldn't get rid of Davis. Who dishes it off to Wehrung. Good start defensively by Bendigo. Wehrung just loses the ball. Gets it back. Wanted Davis, but Maley read that quite easily. And you can see the respect that both of these teams have for one another. There's a bit of pressure that's probably elevated from previous games. So some uncharacteristic fumbles early on. Wilson. Good block there by Atwell, her partner. Playing against her for the first time tonight this season. Early bragging rights. Absolutely. But Wilson wanted it back. Didn't quite get it. Maley. We're on guarding her. It's just a bit stagnant at the moment. Atwell gets it, feeds it into Potter. Atwell, surrounded by Wilson, it affects the shot. McDonald looked as good as it did. Straight coming from her hand. It's as simple as you like for McDonald. And Kelly Wilson gets going, and a nice feed there to Davis, who gets the end one to go as well. She's always probing the keyway, Kelly Wilson, and trying to bait defenders to overhelp. So as soon as there's an extra person or two people that commit to the ball, she's great at finding that open player, finds Davis cutting to the rim. And the official WNBL app is finally here. We don't want you to miss a minute of the action. Therefore, for live scores, highlights, all your player and team info and more, download the free WNBL app today. So here goes McDonald. Hit a big three in the play before. She'll go again. Just so hard to keep in front of you defensively. She's got such a change of pace, much like this athlete, Ali Wilson, who's pretty quick. Davis wanted more, but couldn't quite get the bucket she desired. Atwell gets moving to Maley. Potter, double teamed, and she'll head to the charity stripe. A good move there by the Canadian. 
And great step through footwork here. So he's able to seal on the backside here. You've got Ruth Davis. She plays bodied up to Potter on that possession. And if you've got your body close, the offensive player can either spin off of the contact or step through just like you saw in that possession. So knocks down the first free throw. Does Potter. Nine and a half points per game. Eight and a half rebounds, ranking sixth in the league. 13 points, 10 rebounds, and two assists against Adelaide last week. And she's presenting well to start off this game. The Lynx leading nine to five. Wera to Kelly Wilson. Davis finds Wilson again. Pulls up from the foul line, and that's good from Kelly Wilson. And that's a game changer because she's so great at getting others involved. If she's got an aggressive mindset and she's taking the shots that appear for her, her whole game's going to open up. Atwell just misses that one. Kraka into Weirung. Gets it back. That one just falls short. She hustles for the rebound. It'll be a Perth ball. Davis already with the five points for Bendigo. Kraka yet to score. She's been their leading scorer this season. McDonald, speaking of leading scorer, she's leading the league. 23 and a half points, as Mark mentioned, off the top. That won't help. So the Spirit just regrouping early doors. They're keeping with the links at the moment, but we know how good Perth can be. Undefeated to start the season. And we see Alicia Froling come on for her first minutes of the night. Placing Ruth Davis. Maylie wanted it and she got it. Into Atwell. Shot clock ticks down to seven. Atwell pulls the trigger. Potter's there for the boards, but Wilson just snatched it out of her hands. Gave it off to Ali Wilson. And then Kraka. Just fell out of Wilson's hands. Guided by a bigger potter, so just hands it off to Froling. That was a beautiful pass by Wilson. It's a great pass, and Alicia Froling did a tremendous job of sealing her defender. And Perth respond just like that. Only Maley getting going against her old team. And that's the challenge that you have when you play against the Perth Lynx. It's a quick transition down the floor. They're in attack mode all of the time. Ali Wilson, looking for Kelly Wilson. To Weirung. Just dances around Potter, and that's a nice looking shot there from Weirung. Bendigo looking to match Perth's pace. Early jaws. McDonald. Maylie, of course she's there for some rebounds. Krakow attempts to snatch it off her. She keeps the ball alive, so even though she wasn't able to wrangle it free there for the Lynx, it forces two people having hands on the basketball. Now, even though the ball goes to Bendigo, it's got to be inbounded. You get your defense back and set. It's a mini win there for the Perth Lynx. Absolutely. Kelly Wilson. Here's Kelly Wilson on two assists. Gets that snatched out of her hands by McDonald. Who sees a look ahead in good child and she makes no mistake. And that's that seven seconds or less transition. So they're always trying to play off kick ahead passes. So they'll they'll try to outrun their matchup down the floor. And anybody who gets uh, outletted the basketball is looking ahead, trying to throw over defenders to get the ball uh, to the rim for wide open layups. Wilson into Kraka. Both players yet to score tonight. Good child playing some good D there. Sporting that Batman mask. A little late for Halloween. <laughs> Kraka. Here's Kelly Wilson. Now Froling. Gets around Clint Toycart with ease. It does a really good job of driving baseline. If she can get at your body, she spins off that contact, likes a baseline drive, does a great job of finishing on the opposite side. Doesn't fall and Weirung is able to pick it up, go for a little jog. 
has Kraka for support, who has Wilson for some more, more support. Kraka again. Happy to share it around here, Bendigo. Use all the time on the shot clock. A scoop pass out to Kraka. She manages to keep it in. Goes driving. Just couldn't scoop it through. Looks like it might be a Bendigo ball, despite the shot clock with, um, siren going off. So Bendigo able to get on the free throw line here through Kraka. Her and Kelly Wilson, that last possession, were the only two players that pierced the three-point line with their dribble penetration. And that was what created things, uh, or created a domino effect that forced things to happen. Speaking of making things happen, Kelly Wilson knows just how to do that. Kraka now. Plays a bit of tricks on Maley, but Casey Samuels has the last laugh, just couldn't quite knock it in. Crawling. Jump ball. And we mentioned off the top, the Benigo Spirit second in the competition for offensive rebounds that they're able to recover from missed shots. So they get the ball back or they lock it up close to the basket. They've got quite a bit of size through most positions. You see two offensive rebounds there in the same possession. McDonald's been prolific to start this season. So too is mainly Clint Choi card now looking for good child. Child has to go up against three Bendigo players, doesn't quite get the boards. It ricochets back into her hands. McDonald, let's rip! That's twice that she's hit a kick out three point shot both times. Uh, Ali Wilson and Kelly Wilson, hand comes up far too late. You've got to defend her from almost a four point line. Now, Kelly Wilson, a chance to get some revenge on Erin McDonald, perhaps. Ali Wilson dumps it into Froling, spinning around Clinch Hoy card, couldn't bank it in. Maley. Into good child. McDonald wants back to back three, then she gets them! Mary McDonald is feeling it at the Bend Net Basketball Center. So two of the links. 18 points for 13 now. Scores will level just 30 seconds ago, really. Ellie Wilson. Some much needed free throws coming up here for Bendigo. Just to stem the flow of Mary McDonald on the Perth links. And a smart job here. Uh, by Ali Wilson, takes a straight line to the basket, wears the contact, and then tries to make the basket while fading away. Where's the uh, the bump there, essentially, from Steph Gorman? But that gets her on the free throw line here. Chance for her to get her offensive game going, but it slows the tempo of the ball game now, too. She was willing that ball in, but didn't quite make the journey. Shooting 11.5 points per game, four and a half rebounds, three assists. Couldn't quite, quite make the free throws count. I wonder how much that'll come back to bite the spirit if Ferry McDonald can keep a scoring streak alive. Nine points already this game. But it's a turnover. The Choi card just didn't quite find the person she was looking for. Kelly Wilson. Two points, two assists. On the verge of breaking a whole heap of... WNBL League records this weekend. Of course, Bendigo back in Melbourne on Sunday. And that's a good basket there from Kraka. Nice settler. Just a patient finish. That's called a hostage dribble where you come over the top of the screen and you keep your on-ball defender on your back so you can feel where they are and control them and then just release the contact to go and shoot the ball. Potter just loses it. And this is good here from the spirit. Kraka can go again. Gets it to Kelly Wilson this time. Ali Wilson wants to get going. Out to Samuels, an open three. Made herself better space. Good board there by Froling. Wilson can get going now. Gets it back into Froling. Those two could have got... Those two see each other really well. It's just a matter of converting. And Froling makes up for it. And then crashes into the signage. Wilson now. Ali Wilson. Rolling to Samuels. Gets around McDonald. That shot just falls short. Froling swings it back to Ali Wilson. A deep three. From the car park. Absolutely. She's capable of shooting those, but Bendigo haven't quite had their shots fall and 41% from the field so far. And we've got just under a minute to play in this first term. Clinch Hoyka! 
and fires from the car park in the other end. A good shot from the Warwick Junior. Kelly Wilson, Crocker. And it's back to back threes. It's a shootout. Absolutely, it's what we love to see at the Bennett Basketball Centre. It's capable of holding these sort of games. McDonald wants it on the action, and of course she gets it on the action. My goodness, this is insane. Double digit points for Erie McDonald already. Crocker, offensive foul. Clint Hoycard hits the deck. Here's Maren Crocker driving in. And good defense there by Clint Hoycard. But it will be free throws for Crocker. My apologies. Drains the first one. And again, just getting on the free throw line, that coupled with the possession play, it dictates the terms of the game to be in Bendigo's favor. The pacing is what they want right now. So 14 seconds left for Erin McDonald to add to her 12 points already this game. Five from six from the field. Her team leading by four. She gets to work, dishes it off to a four star. That one just falls short, but it's a great opening stanza from the Perth Lynx. They lead 24, Bendigo Spirit 20 at the Bendat Basketball Centre. We'll be back after this quick break to take you through the second quarter. momentum and power you've created to explode out on your first dribble. Okay, we've got two more. One. Sometimes as women, we look for perfection as opposed to execution. The work ethic is important when the players are 40 years younger than you. to the Bend Up Basketball Centre where it's the Lynx leading the spirit by four points. Julian Montesano and Mark Elabakov here to take you through the second quarter action. Mark, what did you make of the first quarter? It was the Erin McDonald show, really. Well, it was, and it, you know, she showed the class that she's got. She's a premier guard within the competition right now, and she's doing it all. Um, I think the game at the moment looks like it's on the terms of, or the pace, I should say, of the Bendigo spirit. It hasn't been able to be that free-flowing contest for Perth, apart from a few possessions, but it just shows you that you can't rest. So Perth has got six fast break points. They've hit three out of five threes and got five points off turnovers. So as soon as there's an error, they fly down the floor and they get a, a cheap one. So that's 20 points out of the 24 that they put up for the spirit the six offensive rebounds three to alicia froling uh, leads to 10 points in the paint so high percentage shots that they're able to get um, for them it's only the three assists so far though so i'd like to see them be able to get better execution within their half court offense and then couple it with the possession play that they're getting mentioned it is the Erin mcdonald show 12 points already for this game let's see what bendigo can do to curb her influence in this second term as ali wilson looks to get going and a nice feed early on to Froling. That's the perfect start for the Spirit. Exactly what you would want. Perfect execution, great screen set, released position to get possession on that roll to the basket, Froling. Chibatoni on for her first minutes. Gets it to Potter. And then Maylie finds herself with some space. Wearong's right there with her. She'll get the ball back. A chance to level the scores here, the Spirit. Kraka. Wilson. Guarded by a partner, Amy Atwell. It'll be a fun matchup to watch tonight. Froling spins around Potter. Back to back for Alicia Froling and scores a level. 
A great pass by Ali Wilson to sit in the pocket, keep the defender on her back, and just wait for that opportunity to throw the bounce pass. Let's see what Perth can do to respond. Here's Atwell. Driving hard, dishing it out. It pays off in Chibatoni's hands. Shot clock down to four. It might get stripped from her, Chibatoni. It's a great D there by Bendigo. Well, what they're doing is they're playing a sagging man-to-man -man defense. So what that means is everybody who's not guarding the person with the ball is taking one giant step towards that key area and trying to shut down all dribble penetration lanes. So it's forcing Perth to have to play around the perimeter, you know, or rely on that three-point shot. Ali Wilson, zero from five from the field so far tonight. She'll like this one to go in, and it doesn't. She gets her own rebound, and that's better from Ali Wilson. Right on cue. It forces an early timeout for Ryan Petrick and Perth because the Spirit are back in the league early, uh, back in the lead, sorry, early doors. And a great start. Just three consecutive possessions of pretty good execution from uh, the Bendigo Spirit. So being able to find people through offensive execution, if you can couple that, as I mentioned earlier, with the possession play that um, kept them within striking distance within that first quarter, it's going to be a handful for the Perth Lynx to deal with. They've got to respond here. This timeout is brought to you by Signet, Australia's number one digital accessories brand. Signet continues to power the WNBL, Australian owned and designed. Signet is available at JB Hi-Fi, Officeworks and other leading retailers. Visit Signet.com. So purchase finalising the messages in their huddle. It's been a great start from the Spirit Baskets to rolling two of them. And then one to Wilson. It opens up the equal biggest lead for the game of two points against... Perth, who is sitting second, undefeated. Bendigo yet to get their first win of the season. What an almighty upset it will be if they can get the job done here at Bendat Basketball Centre. They haven't beaten the Lynx here since 2018. 2,556 days. It was the 18th of November they got the job done all those years ago. Let's see if they can do it again tonight. They're leading at the moment. Chibatoni wants to change that. Here's Potter now. And that's heaps better from Perth. It's so balanced finishing at the rim. She does a tremendous job of taking off and keeping body control. Wearung now. Dumb sets of Froling, steps around Potter, and Froling's had an electric start to this second term. It's up to Potter to adjust now. She's playing too close to Alicia Froling every time Froling catches the ball, so it's leaving her susceptible to being stepped past like that last play. Potter doing it on the opposite end at least. The two forwards going at it. Potter more of a centre. Crocker takes the contact but couldn't get the basket to go with it. Mailey into Atwell, finds some space. Can't find the bucket, gets her own rebound. Mailey's there too. Gets it in the corner. No one in the key. She might have to go herself here against Wehrer, one of the premier defenders in the league. Puts Maley under pressure and allows Samuels to get going for Bendigo. Gets it off to Wilson. Now Wehrer. Kraka. Wehrer again. That's a good shot there from Abby Wehrer. Great pull up, and Chibatoni did a tremendous job of contesting that shot. Class of wearing on show. Two WNBL veterans, in a way, those two. Despite still being quite young. Chibatoni. Samuels took the contact, and Chibatoni took the bucket. There's something to slowing your footwork towards the rim, getting your balance to make decisions. Great job, Chibatoni. This time, Bendigo elect to move with a bit of speed. Ellie Wilson takes some contact. 30 points apiece over in the West. The Friday night hoops. Let's see what the Spirit can do with this offensive set. Kelly Wilson back on the floor. Wera dumps it into Froling. That one just falls short this time, Chibatoni. Gets it into Potter, and Potter's had a great start to this second term. Three baskets for her. 
Outstanding rim run by Emily Potter. Falling's got to keep her feet so she can get back in defense and contest that shot. It's a really entertaining matchup between Froling and Potter so far. Froling wants a three this time, can't get it. Bailey's there for the rebound. Froling and Potter each with three baskets to start this second term. Potter with it now. McDonald. A nice pass to Maley. That is elite vision. Beautiful pass by McDonald. And this is the gravity that she has. She baits defenders to have to come and play her, or everyone turns their head and looks, finds the cutting Maley. So just like that, Perth on a 6 0 run. Where I'm looking to break the deadlock, and she does. Shibatoni now, long range pass. The Bendigo ball. Potter just with too much body work there on Foley. She'll take a seat for her efforts. So Emily Potter, eight points to start off this game. With her second foul. Kelly Wilson. Gets it from Ellie Wilson. Now Crocker. Wilson. Just looking for an option, happy to take it slow, and then crosses over. Chibatoni right there with her. Great hands. Gets it into McDonald, sets her feet. Can't knock down the three. Maley can't scoop it up on the rebound either. But it's the endeavor too that's really, really valuable. So she doesn't come up with the ball there, but gets fingertips to it. It gets knocked out of bounds, but it's not a big issue. Now you get a chance for your defense to get back and set. The spirit might come down and run a play, but you've got five people behind the ball and you're in an advantageous position. So this time out, sees Perth leading 34, the spirit 32. And this time out is brought to you by your local Ford dealer, proudly supporting community basketball in Australia. Let's see their number one ticket holder there for the Perth Lynx, Sonny Walters. Good to see him in the house. Of course, plays AFL for the Fremantle Dockers. Perth have a great contingent of supporters out in the West. And they'd be liking what they're seeing from their team at the moment. They had a little bit of a scare from mainly Alicia Froling at the start, but they've managed to pull the game right back and still in the lead there, Mark. Yeah, and it's a real arm wrestle. I mean, I know that's really layman to say, but it, the arm wrestle is what we dictated at the start, the pace that the Lynx want to play with. The moment that they get an opportunity to you know, run like thoroughbreds, they do, and they do a whole lot of damage. But then to the contrary, if the Spirit get an opportunity to compete with the size that they have uh, and the endeavour on the offensive glass to keep possessions alive, then the game plays on their tempo. So we've got this real seesawing affair in, in terms of style and, and stylistic changes between the two lineups. That's why you need to keep your TV locked on nine now. This game's going to be close throughout your sense. Second versus seventh, but it feels a whole lot more than that. 34 playing 32 at the moment. Kelly Wilson. Gets it off to Ali Wilson. She's trapped. Werung in the corner. That's good. Chalk up another assist for Kelly Wilson. Needs just one more to get that 1,500 assist mark. Maley nearly loses her feet, manages to keep her feet. Give it to McDonald. Foul on the way in, count the points. She's so quick in a straight line. And this is the, the challenge that you have. Like, how do you guard an Erin McDonald? If you take away that driving lane, she can pull up and shoot the three. So you sit too far off to give her a little bit of a cushion of space and then she shoots over the top of you. You go out and play her and then she blows past you with that first step quickness. A lot of coaches around the league probably pulling their hair out watching Ari McDonald, wondering how to scout her. She's got all the tricks in the book. She's up to 15 points already. The Wilson share the ball. Ali couldn't quite dump it in. Got snatched out of their hands and Bendigo will get the ball once again. Now, one of the things that you've seen with the half-court execution here for the Bendigo Spirit, you've got Abby Werung and Ali Wilson, who are both exceptionally quick drivers going to their left hand, and they have a propensity to want to go to that side uh, as a preference. They're diagramming a lot of their offense to create the space and the advantage going to that side so then they can hit a, a head of steam and cause havoc at the rim. 
Verong tried a no-look pass. It didn't really go to anyone. Goodchild able to scoop it up and give it to Maley, but it just missed out. And you go, Ball. Good child, first season with Perth after coming across from the, Mel the Melbourne Boomers. Perth leading 37 to 35. Three minutes 50 left to play in the opening half. Friday night hoops at Bendat Basketball Centre. It's been Erin McDonald's show so far, 15 points. Wearung's had some good contribution with nine points of her own. She'll give it to Ali Wilson. Davis back on the floor and she gets it from Samuels and able to lay it in. Good contribution there by Ruth Davis. McDonald, Forster. What a McDonald again, but instead got Clinch Hoycard who can, can't bank it in, in fact. Samuels switched on just at the right time. Kelly Wilson now. Looking for her 1,500th assist. Where um, Here is Kelly Wilson. Samuels can't quite knock it down. Kelly Wilson starts things again. A fresh 12 here for Bendigo. Pass is picked up by Perth. And Erin McDonald uses her speed to get going. Four star. Clint Choi card and a bit too much mail in that one. But you can see there's a lot that's threatening. That's, I think, the third or fourth just miscommunication or overthrown pass from the Perth Lynx. But it's a dangerous-looking play, whether it's going to be an open three or something to the rim. Once they start connecting with that stuff, it's going to cause a little bit of a run for the Perth Lynx, I think. Here's Ali Wilson. Davis. Kelly Wilson. Dishing it back to Davis, and there it is. 1,500 assists for Kelly Wilson. WNBL. Davis adds to her points tally. She's done it again. So too is Erin McDonald. Not enough time to celebrate Kelly, sorry. Erin McDonald just taking the Perth Lynx on her back. Samuels. Wilson again. Where um that one just falls out. Oh McDonald took a heavy hit. And congratulations to Kelly Wilson. I mean what a momentous achievement. But knowing her the way that I do, this won't mean anything to her unless they win the game. So she'll be as competitive as ever for the following half and the rest of this one, a minute fifty one to play. She's the third player in WNBL history to record 1,500 assists. She's chasing that second spot, which is currently held by Christy Harawa with 1,504. So she's edging closer. It's only a matter of time. Absolutely. Good start so far with two points as well for her. This time, it'll be Wearung that collects the rebound. Wilson to Ali Wilson. Another assist and another three for Ali. The Wilsons combined. She might be in a hurry to break that record tonight. It looks like it. Ali Wilson in a hurry to get that ball as well. Maley. Happy to slow things down. Links down at the moment. Good child takes the contact and takes the foul as well. Good move by Mila Goodchild. And great for her to continue to have an attack mindset. I mean, she's a very talented scorer. She's been proven to be able to be that type of contributor within the WNBL uh, and certainly everywhere that she's played. She's only had the four field goal attempts so far, but pleasingly, she's got the four assists. So she's still contributing on the offensive end, making the right plays and getting other people involved. So Mila Goodchild averaging six and a half points and a rebound per game. Two points last game, one from ten from the field. So she'll be hoping for better fortune this game. And she's already had a pretty lively start. Three points now to go along with four assists. Make that four points. Good couple of settling free throws there for Perth. Spirit were on the run. And they'll take a timeout. 
Spirit 42, leading Lynx 41. And this timeout is brought to you by CTM Sport. CTM Sport is here to transform your team's travel experience. Leave the hassle of off-court arrangements to CTM Sport, the expert in sports travel management. Get the winning edge at ctmsport.com.au. So, Mark, what have you made of this second quarter so far? We've had records broken. We've had Ari McDonald sitting at 17 points. It's had it all, really. It's all happening, isn't it? Um, the Bendigo Spirit are playing the game, I think, on their terms right now for this half. It's the possession play that's slowing the game down. They're forcing it to become a half-court grind or a half-court execution battle, which is not how the Perth Lynx want to play. They want to get out and run and gun primarily and build a lot of their scoreline from uh, those type of offensive looks. So where it, you know, we have less possessions when it's going up and down and just half-court offense versus half-court offense, this is totally the, the type of tempo that Bendigo would want in this type of an affair. And we have to talk about Alicia Froling as well. She's leading the way with 10 points, five from nine from the field at the moment, three rebounds to go with it too. I mean, she's had a pretty good start to this second term. Yeah, and, you know, she's a great finisher at the basket, but let's not discredit when I say the execution stuff, the, the delivery of the basketball to her. It gets given to her where all she needs to do is go make a layup. So credit the whole team effort. And a good start out of the timeout for the Lynx. Straight away, Amy Atwell goes bang. Kelly Wilson, a minute to work with here to get the lead back. Kraka scoops it back out to Ali Wilson. Likes the look of this. That one just falls out. Atwell can get involved once again. McDonald, 17 points already. We're not even at half time. Ooh, and a big hit for Wilson off the ball. McDonald goes down as well. Potter's still there for the boards. And a foul does get called eventually. Wilson still a bit proppy from that knock, holding her lower back. She'll get helped up by Kraker and Wehrung. See the contact here. McDonald feeling a bit proppy as well, and a big heavy screen there from Potter was the cause of it. I mean, McDonald just got in the way. You never want to see anybody get hurt, but how's the hardness of the contest, the sheer competitiveness of these two teams? I mean, we've got a heck of a basketball game still left to come. Absolutely. Ellie Wilson running off the court. Looks like we're going to have a timeout. Once again, 17 seconds left, so one more play each for each coach. Is there anything you'd be suggesting here, Mark? Well, I mean, it's a chance to try to steal points. So you can see how close the scoreline is. It's a two-point game right now. You're trying to find any little edges that you can to sneak a couple of extra points on the, the scoreboard and go into half time with momentum. So if you, you know, for either of these coaches, if you get a chance to have a, uh, a shot attempt within this last 17 seconds, you want to diagram something to get uh, a particular shot for a player, particularly somebody who's hot uh, from the field. So if it's a Perth Lynx, I'm trying to get Erin McDonald involved in some sort of action, assuming she's is not hurt. Um, for the Bendigo Spirit, I mean, anything with the pick and roll uh, that gets Alicia Froling involved in the contest has been profitable for them. Absolutely right. 17 seconds left in this entertaining opening half. Let's see what Perth Lynx can do in front of their home fans. Alicia Froling getting off to that fabulous start to the game. 10 points, five from nine from the field for her. McDonald, guarded by Wilson. McDonald, 19 points. Crazy game from her so far. And Wilson gets it out to where um, Kelly Wilson dishing it off. Colin couldn't quite capture it. And that is the end of a very entertaining opening half at the Bendat Basketball Centre. Perth Lynx 46, leading Bendigo Spirit 42. Erin McDonald, the star of the show so far with 19 points. Alicia Froling with 10 for Bendigo. 
Let's take a breath, Mark. What did you make of that opening half? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I mean, frenetic, right? So I think for the most part, to me, it looked like it was played on Bendigo's terms. So being able to hold the links to only the eight assists, um, they had five points off turnovers and six fast break points in the first quarter alone. And now at half time, they haven't added to any of the points off turnovers and they've only had two fast break points in that second quarter alone. So Bendigo's been able to slow the game down, uh, play it on their terms, make it a half court execution battle where they've done a better job in this quarter of being able to get the right people shots uh, and create advantages. They've got 24 points in the paint and nine offensive rebounds. So if they can control possession like this, you know, they're in with a shot that puts them uh, in a chance to win. For the Perth Lynx, their ever-present threat of two things, the three-point shot and then getting scores in transition. It's a damn wall that you're trying to hold shut for the entirety of the game, but inevitably it opens up at, at some juncture. You've just got to hope that it doesn't leak too many points because it's been able to put the Lynx back into the lead here at halftime. Kelly Wilson becoming the third player in WNBL history to record, to record 1,500 assists during that second term. Let's look at the stats for the game, though, because that's what she'd be worried about. And right now, it's pretty even for her team up against the Lynx, Mark. Yeah, it is. And the thing that you know it stands out to me, the Lynx, in their first two wins, they haven't shot the three-point shot particularly well, but they've still been able to get two results. You know, right now at four of nine, that's a pretty good output, right? It's less three-point attempts than probably what they were looking for, but they're shooting it at a good clip. If they're able to get half-court execution that creates the same type of key or three-point shot, uh, you know, a hierarchy of, of shot... Um, uh, shot ability for them, you know, that's going to be the way that they want to play. For the Spirit, you know, we talked about uh, their ability to control the game and the tempo of it. They've got the 10 assists. That's come largely in this second quarter through the half-court execution for them. And that's some good stats at half-time. And it reads right now that the Lynx are leading by four. And don't go anywhere. An exciting second half is coming right up after this as the kids put on a show the Ford Aussie Hoops. Right now, it's Perth 46, leading Bendigo 42. Ford dealers have backed sport in communities for nearly 100 years. And now, from the Boomers and Opals to Aussie Hoops, your local Ford dealer is proud to support basketball. Because all dreams start somewhere. Starting to get a bit of energy. Pass into Roof. And then instead lands to Kunek, who hits a three and will go to the line for an extra after being fouled. Russell, they'll run it all the way down. She lost the handle. She got time to turn, spin, and score. It counts. Atwell steals, and then he's denied <laughs> by Izzy B. Hey guys, I'm Jade. And I'm Alex. We're here with Edward and Layla today as part of the Forward Aussie Hoops program. We're going to play some games and have some fun. One coin. What do you reckon? Oh! <laughs> the wind's not happy. He wants to win. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, wait. Yeah. Make him get excited. Yeah. I heard that. <laughs> oh, she's all over it. <laughs> oh, she saw it! <laughs> You said right yeah! you <laughs> Good game, guys. Good game. <laughs> Good job, Good Layla. job.
It's the love these parents have been searching for. Now. This is the biggest decision I've had to make. Their kids will decide. You think you're ready for this? Their fate. You've already got me sick and guessing. Hold on to your heart. I don't know what I'm saying. For love's final test. Do you want to go for a talk? Um... The must-see finale, Monday, 7.30 on 9 and 9 now. Hello, Australia. Want to go for a ride? A summer heat wave has arrived. This is it. This is what you've been waiting for. Four spicy nights a week. It's open season. It's Love Island. Be afraid, boys. The power has shifted. The girls are in charge. What the hell? What the hell? Surprise! The steamy villain era has arrived. New Love Island. New episodes drop Monday to Thursday on 9 now. Welcome back to the Bend Up Basketball Centre, where it's the Perth Lynx leading the Bendigo Spirit by four points at halftime. Julia Montesano and NBL One Championship coach Mark Alabakov here to take you through the second half action. Mark, we saw Kelly Wilson dish off her 1500th career assist in that half. You've worked quite closely with her over the years. Can you speak a bit about your connection with her and what makes her so special as a player? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. Special. She's a literal superwoman to play at the level that she has. I've been privileged to coach Kelly at the Bendigo Braves in the NBL 1 for the past few years. Last season, we went 28-0. and 0. We won the NBL 1 South Championship and the NBL 1 National Championship together. She's been an integral part of our, uh, our program. She's a winner. She exudes on-court leadership and winning habits you know, akin to the likes of your Joel Selwoods, your Cam Smith, some of the greatest leaders in Australian sport. An exceptional passer, you know, probably the best IQ that I've ever been around uh, as a, an athlete. And she's got a team first lens, so she's not worried about individual accolades, you know, as fantastic as they are. She's just a, a winner, wants the team to be successful and puts that above all. Absolutely. Another player that puts it above all is Erin McDonald for the Perth Lynx. She has started this game on fire. 17 points, 77% from the field, four rebounds and two assists. What's made her game so great so far, Mark? Well, the versatility that she has with her attack, right? So she's got 19 out of the team's 46 points. She's 8 of 10, so she doesn't force any of the action. Everything happens organically within the confines of their offense, so it's predictable for the rest of the team. She's got the four rebounds as well, two of them offensive, even though she's the smallest player on the floor. But you know, she's got that winning edge, that tenacity to go and compete for possession. You see the assists there to Mila Goodchild. She's got two of them, one steal, so she's locking people up defensively. She's statistically the most effective player on the court for this first half, and she's going to be critical in this second half, especially if other people get going and you know, she continues to have the time and space to attack that she's had. I said 17 points earlier, I meant 19. Not even I can keep up with her, she's doing so well. But Mark, what does each team need to do to get the win in this second half? Well, for Perth, they've got to stick to their identity. So they want to play relentlessly with quickness in transition. Um, in their half court, they've got to find new ways to create space, I think. So the Bendigo Spirit has been able to defensively bog them down and slow them to a little bit of a screeching halt. You can get that by cutting, you can get that by swinging the ball from side to side force the defenders to have to close you out and then be able to have the space to attack one-on-one. -on -one. Defensively, they've got to change their pick-and-roll defense. So a smart you know, team led by the likes of Kelly Wilson, if you let them get into a rhythm of attacking the same defense, uh, you know, they, they find solutions to that and they pick you apart. For Bendigo, the tempo control that they've had so far, um, they've been able to create shot predictability and then they've got to keep pursuing the offensive glass because they're tall and those tall players don't get any smaller uh, and they've got great possession players so they've got a will to try and get the ball back. They've got four players who've all got an offensive rebound. You've got four to Ali Wilson, three to Alicia Froling, one to Ruth Davis and that's led to 24 points in the paint out of their 42. So high percentage looks that they've been able to work hard for but in the second half when everyone starts to get tired it puts you in a position to be fouled as well so I, I use the phrase slowing the game to a screeching halt they've got to try to continue down that path in the second half here. 
Well, we talk about Ari McDonald, but other contributors around the court, Emily Potter, eight points, Maley with seven, and then for Bendigo, we've got Froling with 10 points, Wearung with nine, and also Davis with nine, Kraka with seven. So both teams giving their best shot right now. Perth undefeated to start this season. Bendigo winless to start the season, would you believe it, after so much success. And of course, they're missing Annalie Maley, who won an MVP with this side two years ago, or two seasons ago, I should say. Now in enemy colours, but really relishing her new role with Perth. Both teams just sitting in the timeouts, really pondering what they're going to do in this second half. What sort of plays and, and themes do you think each um, coach is drawing on here, Mark? Well, I mean, it's the, the space creation if you're the Perth Lynx. For Bendigo, they're not going to be too fussed walking the ball up the floor and turning it into that half-court battle that I've alluded to. And in that second quarter, they did a great job of executing through the first, I want to say, seven or eight minutes. They were leading the quarter by about, it was a six to eight point mark before you know, the relentless pace that Perth plays with. And, you know, I, I said like a damn wall that you're trying to hold shut. You know, that opens and all of a sudden there's a quick influx of... Uh, of baskets and three-point shots and then all of a sudden the Perth Lynx are back in the picture. So it's a, an arm wrestle of momentum and the, the pace that this game is, is going to be played on. So we're just about ready to tip off in the third quarter. Kelly Wilson can break another record tonight. She needs another four assists to move into second on all time and overtake Christy Harrower in that spot. So look out for her. Five assists at the moment. She needs nine to get into that second spot. But Potter says, nah, -uh, not tonight. We've got a great battle of the bigs between Potter and Davis or Potter and Froling. High quality stuff. Wilson scoops it into Davis. Here's Kraka. Now Wehrung. Nine points for her so far. Davis also on the nine points. Kelly Wilson pulls up and drains it. says, don't worry about assists, I can do a bit of scoring as well. Well, she has to, because then that's what opens up the ability for her to use her court vision and get those assists. She's got to stay a threat offensively. Good child dumps it into Potter, spinning, shooting, but not scoring. And two players hit the deck there. Surprise, surprise, Maley in the thick of it. Kraka running hard on offense. They don't find her quite yet. Kelly will set up against Aaron McDonald. Oh, a little behind the back pass, but Potter picked it off. And she goes on her own, just glided through there. I don't know what Bendigo's defense was doing, but Potter with back-to-back -back baskets to start her second half. Well, that's the pace they play with, and when you've got Potter comfortable dribbling the ball and, and initiating the break, Ruth Davis isn't quick enough to go with her. Ali Wilson couldn't quite get the friendly roll. Maley now. Sharing it with Atwell and now Potter. Potter up to 10 points for the game. McDonald to 19 for the game. Oh my goodness, she adds another three to her score sheet. Averaging 23 and a half per game, leading the league in scoring and putting on a show tonight. But the third three that she's been able to hit without a defender's hand up, you can still play her with a cushion Nagato drive. You've got to keep a high hand. Wilson left open. Can't respond. McDonald wants to add to her 22 points. Sets her feet, goes again. Didn't quite work out. Holly Wilson not quite liking the call. Kennedy Kiriyama a bit frustrated there too on the bench in his second season with Bendigo, head coach. 53 playing 44. The refs will just converge here to see what the call is. He was just explaining to Kennedy Kariyama how he came up with that call. It looks like both teams will head in for a quick timeout just to talk everything through. It's been a pretty fiery start to this third term. 53 playing 44. And this timeout is brought to you by Ford Aussie Hoops. Ford Aussie Hoops is the perfect introduction to the world of basketball for kids aged 5 to 10 years. Visit aussiehoops.basketball to register. Mark, what have you made of the start so far? Potter with two early baskets and McDonald now up to 22 points for the Lynx. 
Well, we said that it was going to be an arm wrestle of the pace of the game that they wanted this thing to be um, dictated by. So the Perth Lynx are able to get out in transition. I like Potter's ability to rebound the ball and then initiate the break herself. So she's able to take one, two breakout dribbles and look ahead. If she doesn't have anybody to throw to, I believe it's the second time in the game that she's been able to go coast to coast. Uh, and I love her aggressiveness offensively to be able to do that because she's going to outrun you know, the taller Ruth Davis, but one that's going to be challenged uh, by her ability to cover the floor up and down you know, with the same mobility that Potter has. So top scorers on your screen. McDonald with 22, Potter with 12, and then Froling leading the way for Bendigo with 10. Seven minutes, 44 left to play in this third period. Kennedy Kariyama still having a word with the ref. But it is a Bendigo ball, so we can smile for now. His team desperate to get themselves back into the lead. Perth have got themselves a nice little buffer here. Froling, a mismatch here on McDonald, but gets it to Kraka. Links in a 2-3 zone, so there's been a defensive change up here, trying to disrupt the play. And it works. Maley gets the rebound. A look ahead pass to Good Child, who wants to go for three and gets it. And that's the trouble when you play for fouls. So driving to the basket there, if you're falling over, you've got to keep your feet because Perth Lynx is not a team you want to be playing four defenders against five in transition against. Froling wants to do that drive again. But this time we'll head to the charity stripes for our efforts. See, I'd love these athletes to keep their feet and be able to play through the contact because then that gives them a chance to compete for the offensive glass but then also get back in transition. So here, Alicia Froling goes to the deck. If that foul isn't called, that's five on four back the other way. So Alicia Froling, 10 points, five from nine from the field so far. Leading the way in rebounds for her team with five and a half this season to go with 13 points per game. Of course, the twin sister of Melbourne's Keely Froling. Who's also having a, a really good start to the WNBL season. And they face off against each other on Sunday. At Parkville, Melbourne's first home game of the season. The 40 year anniversary. So the Lynx out to 10 points. Froling able to cut the lead ever so slightly. Lynch card and Goodchild exchange hands and Goodchild gets the finish. And that's the space creation that we were talking about. So being able to get the ball changing sides, get an action that dislodges a defender. Goodchild catching fire here in this third quarter. Kraker finding some space and says count the bucket. Gives a bit of voice to the crowd as well. A strong finish by her riding the contact. So here, going to the rim in a straight line, maybe a little bit of a push off there, but rides the second contact. That's the one that gets the whistle and then finishes on the rim. Maren Kraker is fired up. So we talk tempo control, getting the ball at the rim, layup, basket scored, now a free throw. Now Benigo gets their defense back. Or maybe not. <laughs> well, that was Aaron McDonald instead to keep going. Probably the, the worst case scenario for them, running hot on 22 points, make it 24. Aaron McDonald, you are unbelievable. If you're Benigo, you might be thinking timeout if you don't get a score on this possession. And a travel call there is not going to help their case. And it's getting a bit lippy out there, Froling with a bit to say as well. 60 playing 48 though. Perth with their signature high scoring, high octane offense. First seven seconds, as you've mentioned a few times in this broadcast, Mark. They move it quickly and at well, can't quite convert. They've got to shut the window. There was a breeze coming through the arena on that one. Rolling into Weirung and now Kraker. Here's Ali Wilson. Gets it out to Kraker. Froling. Trying to spin around Maley and again, troubles. Outstanding defense by Annalie Maley. So this is what I was alluding to earlier. So where Froling was able to get the better of Potter, Potter had her body too close every time that uh, Froling caught the ball. So she could spin off the contact or step through. Annalie Maley keeps a gap and then the step through is attempted, but she forces a travel. 
McDonald now puts the afterburners on. And a whistle blow means it'll head back to Perth. So a comfortable lead here for the Lynx. 12 points. Five and a half minutes left to play in this third term. It's their biggest lead of the game. So here, Anneli Maley keeps her feet and body away. So Froling tries to step through, but because she had that initial separation, she's able to stay in front. McDonald, not this time. Another foul called. Maley saying thank you. <laughs> That's what makes her such a tough cover because she's as relentless as they come to pursuing the offensive glass. She goes every single time without hesitation. Clint Choi card now. Stepping around the Bendigo defense. Froling pulls the board away. And again, another foul call. This time it wasn't to Maley's advantage. So this is a response, I think, by the referees to be able to get control of this game just before it gets too spiteful, let's say. Smart job by the refs. Ali Wilson now going up against McDonald. And McDonald this time commits the foul. So for both teams, they've just got to be smart, just continue to steer their focus back on winning the basketball game. So the Lynx up to four team fouls for this third term. Verging on bonus territory. Where rung now. Pulls up. That one doesn't go in. And the Perth crowd happy to see it in Anneli Maley's hands. Tough shot, couldn't convert it. Where rung now. Bendigo looking to move it with pace. Wilson. Dishing it back off to Froling, rolling around. And Maley's able to stick the hands. And look for McDonald. You see Maley there with 11 rebounds. Clinch, hoy card. That one just rattles out. Ali Wilson. So Froling. And a foul called there, once again, on Perth. So it will be three uh, free throws, sorry, to come for Alicia Froling. Perth now in the bonus territory. So Spirit can take advantage here of these last four minutes and 17 seconds and try and get to the line as much as they can. I think you hit the nail on the head. So you've got four minutes that you can leverage here to try and get a whole lot of attack going to the basket. But try to make some of these plays. You can get three-point plays by finishing at the hoop, playing through the contact, and you'll get the extra free throw. So there's some extra points. But, uh, you know, we talked about Spirit wanting to slow the game to a screeching halt. Getting on the free throw line does that. But converting them is quite key in these situations as well, especially when you're down by 11. And, uh, red hot Aaron McDonald, where are to go on the other side of the court? This time facing Wehrung. Scoops it's a Clint Choi card. Gorman in for her first action. Wilson with the rebound. Kraka, ooh, just avoided Ari McDonald and then the pass to McGoldrick fell out of court. There's a McGoldrick on for her first minutes tonight. Now, if you're the Lynx, you're in no hurry unless there's an opportunity to get a clean rebound and push down the floor. You want to execute in the half court, have the ball change side to side and try to chew up all of the possessions left in this 3 minutes 47 uh, seconds so that you can go into the break with as much of a lead as possible. So Perth looking to share it around. McDonald's. Able to keep the ball in her hands. Dish it off to Chibatoni. Potter up against Davis this time. It gets out to Clinch Hoycard. And she'll head to the line for two. In case in point, 23 seconds of the ball changing sides. They get a straight line, drive on a closeout, get themselves onto the free throw line as well. So they've chewed up a whole lot of the remaining clock 
uh, within this quarter. Now they've got free throws of their own. You know, apart from a layup, the second highest percentage shot you can take is a free throw. Clint card drains the first one. Up to four points for the game to go with three rebounds. And she gets another point to her tally as well. It's a 1-2-2 two, two half-court trap deployed here by the Perth Lynx. Just trying to break the rhythm of the Bendigo spirit and blow up some of whatever they're choosing to execute here. Wilson can't quite get it to go. And McDonald looking to add to her 24 points for the game. Happy to slow it up for a bit. It's still with Eric McDonald, then crosses over, and then heads to the free throw line. All class from the Atlanta Dream Star. The next time Perth's down the floor, watch Kelly Wilson. So the way that they're trying to attack uh, the dribble penetration here and the explosiveness of Aerie McDonald is by choosing who they're prepared to help off of on the three-point line and challenge them to have to make shots. So Kelly Wilson is guarding um, Chibatoni and she's helping almost like a one-player zone. So being in the key, ready to try and blow up some of these drives and then challenging Aerie McDonald to throw the ball out. 25 points for her though. And she just keeps climbing up the ranks. She's going to take a seat now, and Chloe Force is going to get some well-earned minutes. And a big round of applause for Ari McDonald taking a seat. Can we also give props to Coach Ryan Petrick, the best coach in the league at being able to manage games and rest for players? Just does a tremendous job. So you're going to see Ari McDonald get some well-deserved rest and then come out firing for a fourth quarter push. The team out to a good lead as well, so she can afford to take a seat. Wilson for where run and Davis can't quite get the finish. Would love to see her just come down, ground both feet and then go up under control and put that away. They needed that basket, the spirit. Forster. Combines with her fellow Warwick teammate in Clint Choicard and then Chubatoni pulls up. That one just falls short. Wilson. The Goldrick scoops it to Samuels and then kicks it out Great. further to Wehrung. Great ball movement by the Spirit. Baseline drive, kick out, extra pass, Wehrung on the end of that connection, top of the key three. Chibatoni. It's a clinch hoy card. Gorman now. Potter dancing around Davis and getting the finish as well. Now, Davis has got some exceptional length at six foot six, putting her hand up. She's almost eight feet tall. Potter gets into her armpit, so she can't use that length to challenge a shot. Wilson with the rebound. Wehrung. Samuels fouled on the way in. Basket won't count. If you're the Lynx, you've got to have impulse control. So Gorman jumping off Abby Wehrung to try and get a swipe at the basketball. It's risky when you've got the foul trouble that they have. So now that you're going to put the spirit on the free throw line, they haven't had to execute anything particularly damaging. You've almost gifted them two shots here. You've got to have game management impulse control. Bendigo have brought on their three big playmakers, Froling, Wilson and Crack are back on the floor. Jeez, I tell you, they love to bring on, and that's Kelsey Griffin. We're expecting her, hopefully, to return from that hamstring injury on Sunday against Melbourne, is what we're being told. So hopefully she can get through and suit up for her first game of the season. Now watch for tempo control. The Benigo Spirit in a 2-2-1 press. So this is designed to saturate more defenders in that front court, try and slow you up at bringing the ball down the floor. Here's Forster. Chibatoni finds some space. Potter. Couldn't quite put the shot up. Good D there by the Spirit. Kraka gets moving. Wilson back to Kraka. Once Samuels just got her. And Samuels can't quite finish the reverse. Froling, good rebound. And we'll go to the line for a couple. So good play there from the Bendigo Spirit. Finding some late momentum in this quarter. 
They've gone on a 5-2 to two run in the past couple of possessions. So just trying to get the ball to the tip of the rim, puts them in positions to get fouled. And we mentioned that here, the possession play, offensive rebounds, you get a high percentage look here for Froling, which doesn't go down. But I mentioned it puts you in a position to get fouled. Defenders get desperate when the ball's close to the basket. Now she gets herself onto the free throw line. Just like that, Ari McDonald back onto the floor for Perth as well. Ryan Petrick sensing a bit of a Bendigo run. Lynx still leading by 11, though. Crowley knocks down the second one. McDonald's. 30 seconds left in this third term. It's been quite even. They're still leading by 10. Gorman gets her first bucket of the game. Another foul called there. Chibatoni not liking it. Allows Crocker to go to the line. So that's the impulse control. You've got to keep a, at least a, a handshake distance from the person with the ball so that you can keep in front of them uh, and be able to contain the ball handler. All they needed to do was keep in front of Cracker, force the spirit to have to eat some clock up. Uh, and then be able to try and execute for a basket. Instead, you give them two points here. The benefit is, I mean, you do get the ball back here with 16 seconds to go if you can run something, but you don't want the Spirit to get any semblance of momentum. Right now, they're just not converting their free throws. They've had a few opportunities now. McDonald up against Wilson. Seven seconds to work with to try and extend Perth's lead and get even more momentum heading into three-quarter time. McDonald lets fly. But either way, it's still a Perth Lynx lead at the end of the third term. It's Perth 67, leading Bendigo 56. Mary McDonald up to 25 points for the game. Pottle with 14, Goodchild with 9. And then for Bendigo, Froling with 14, Wehran with 12. A big quarter coming up for the Spirit. Winless to start their season. What can they do to get back into this contest? Offensive rebounds, try and play through contact, score the basketball with the size and the talent that they've got, uh, and then hopefully get an extra free throw, but not rely on that to be the ticket to win the game for them. It's the Perth Lynx in the box seat to continue their undefeated start to the season. Bendigo staring down the barrel of their winless streak, unfortunately, but it's a funny game basketball. A lot can happen in 10 minutes, 67 playing 56. Bendigo hoping for a good start. And that one just trickles out of bounds. They've got the right people on the floor. Ali Wilson, five points for her so far this game. Two for 12 from the field, so would like to be shooting it a bit better. And she's one to watch. So two from 12, but she'll stay aggressive like this. And charge into Maley, unfortunately for her. 
I like her having the aggressive mindset, but then Maylie, she's played a lot of basketball uh, with and against Alex Wilson over the years, knows her you know, as well as anybody, jumps out, gets her feet in front, wears the contact down the, the middle of her sternum. Maylie with 12 rebounds, leading the way for the Perth Lynx this game in that category. On the verge of a double-double as well with seven points. Here's Atwell, sharing it with Maylie. Perth searching for the first basket of the fourth term. McDonald getting in the way, but Maylie's able to keep control. Atwell, a nice step, but an equally good bit of defense from Alicia Froling. An offensive foul there by Atwell. And that was on the landing, so smart job of getting her feet in front, Alicia Froling. Amy Atwell, beautiful pass there to clinch Hoycard at the rim, just has to land where, almost where she takes off of. Anytime that you land forward, you're at risk of landing on top of a defender. Wilson double teamed and fouled. So aggressive D here from Perth. And Wilson calling for a bit of help. You've got to be careful though, they've picked up two fouls in essentially 10 seconds here, the Perth Lynx. You don't want to face a situation where you're getting on the free throw line every time there's a whistle. You know how fast they like to play. Bendigo like a bit of a slower pace. Wilson, a nice fake there, a fake pass there from to Froling. Didn't pay off, and oh, that's some heavy contact there. Wilson and that well, pretty friendly there. They'll talk about that on the drive home, I'm sure. Atwell to inbound here for Perth. And we'll have some early subs here from Bendigo Wehrung onto the floor as is Kraka. And Kelly Wilson takes a seat. The impact of Atwell with the three-point shot is always going to be looming over teams. So she's only got the, the three points to her name so far. So one of three from the three-point line, one of seven from the field. If she can get going, she's the type of athlete that can score you 10, 12, 14 points in a quarter alone if she gets hot. Clint Choi card putting on the moves on, on Weirung. But Weirung wins out. Samuels for an open look and makes it rain. Good three ball there from Casey Samuels. McDonald this time into Goodchild. Finds a lane. Can't find the pass. It'll be a Bendigo ball. So some good defense here by Alicia Froling, keeping them in this game. Momentum starting to turn. If your coach Ryan Patrick, if the Spirit get a score on this next possession, you're probably thinking of shutting the game down for a moment, calling a timeout. Just to regroup. Kraker into Wehrung. Ali Wilson. Strong drive and gets the finish as well. Watch out, Perth. Lead down to six. McDonald's goes under the defense and gets the M1. Erin McDonald up to the task of getting Perth back on top. How about that matchup, though? Her being able to go to the basket, play through the contact, and get a, herself a hoop, and then. You had Ali Wilson just the previous possession. Straight line drive, accelerates hard to the basket, gets herself a basket at the other end. Erin McDonald, 27 points and six rebounds this game. And there you go, 28 points now. Kraka, where I'll just keeps it in. Gets it back to Kraka. Samuels, five points for her so far this game. Wilson. Can't convert. Maylie. Atwell. Goes under the defense. Good shot in the corner. Kicks it out to Clinch Hoycard. And that's great basketball from the Lynx. Timeout called. 73 plays 61. Ryan Petrick and Kennedy Kerry Arbor want to talk things over. Beautiful execution, and this is what, you know, the first domino in that play is Amy Atwell driving the ball. This is what she's added to her game. So she's got the three-point shot. Now she's making better decisions at when to go off the dribble. She gets a straight-line drive. Defenders converge, and they try to blow that dribble penetration up. She kicks the ball out, 
And when you play against Perth, you've got to fly around the place. They camp around the three-point line, and they've got five people on the floor that can all shoot the three, generally speaking. So you fly out at the first one, and then it's the extra pass that kills you. You've got a longer closeout to go and contest that shot. This timeout is brought to you by the WNBL app. The official WNBL app is finally here. We don't want you to miss a minute of the action. Therefore, for live scores, highlights, all your player and team info and more, download the free WNBL app today. 73 playing 61. 7 minutes 38 left in this ball game. Bendigo winless to start their season. Perth undefeated. A lot to play for, Mark. Yeah, and the momentum changes. You know, Spirits start the quarter on their terms. They get a little bit of a head of steam up, and then all of a sudden, like, Perth just lands haymakers. When they score, they score in bunches. Back-to-back -back buckets for the Lynx. Forced that timeout. First it was McDonald with the M1, then Klitsch Hoykar with the three. What have Bendigo got in response? Samuels kicked off the scoring to start off this fourth term. Gets it back, not quite. Bailey there to cut it off. Has no one ahead of her at the moment and gets fouled. And credit the defensive change up by coach Ryan Pett. The timeout that uh, Bendigo took, they've probably drawn up a play to get a particular outcome, expecting a man to man defense. So when you play a zone, they don't know where the shot is going to come from. You essentially blow up or have a counter move to the Bendigo coach's move. McDonald thinks about it and goes for it. Points tally keeps on climbing. Erie McDonald. Samuels wants to step around her. Gets it off to Froling. Found a bit of space but couldn't find the basket. Good child now. Ooh, thinks about going herself. Clint Hoycard gets it. Maley sets her feet. Doesn't quite roll. Couldn't quite collect the rebound. Wilson, no one ahead of her. Finds Wehrung. Good transition basket from Bendigo. And smart to attack quickly. So there's a, a scoring transition. So the Spirit had zero points off fast breaks coming into three-quarter time. And I mentioned this is a way that you can start to eat into that scoreline. It's got to be off effort-based plays like this. Mary McDonald, 30-piece for her tonight. Six rebounds and three assists as well, if you don't mind. Season high for her. Had 29 points against Adelaide last week. Clinch Hoycard now. Where are Crocker? Ali Wilson. Kelly Wilson. Wants some movement from her teammates. Gets Where are Thinks about it, and then dishes it to Froling. And will head to the line for a couple. 75 playing 63, just under six minutes left in this game. It gets tougher for Bendigo. They play Melbourne on Sunday, so a quick turnaround. A long flight to Perth. And then Perth play against Southside. They're down in Melbourne on Wednesday night. Alicia Froling a double-double. 15 points now to go with 10 rebounds. She's been a shining light for Bendigo so far. And gets both free throws to go. 14 fouls for the Spirit, three for the Lynx. McDonald into Maley. Atwell scoops it into Werung. Not quite the intended target. Rolling. Wants an option, then goes herself. Reached over the top of Potter beautifully. And smart by Froling to go like straight at Potter. Potter's got the four fouls. She's going to be compromised, you know, wanting to contest that shot. She's just got to play straight up. Maley, a long look. Wilson able to collect the rebound. Defense chant rings around the arena. Kelly Wilson. Six assists for the game. Needs nine to move in the second. That one won't work. Gorman. 
to Mailey. And it'll be Bendigo ball here. Bench gets up and about with that one. Potter didn't like the call though. See, she just had too much connection there with Froling. Froling has worn a bit of contact tonight. And Potter off with five fouls for the game. 14 points for her tonight. Three rebounds and two assists. It allows perhaps Froling a bit of space to try and get the spirit of the win here. Kraka lets it fly. So is this a turning point in the game? Potter off, Spirit down by five. Four minutes, 28 left to play. This is the critical matchup here. Mackenzie Clinch, Hoy Card and Alicia Froling. McDonald gets fouled on the way in. Already up to 30 points this game. Six rebounds, three assists. And she wants the ball in her hands to make decisions with the game on the line. So she can do that early within the clock if she gets it and goes immediately. But one thing that they can do to eliminate predictability, get her to give the ball up, bring her off some other action, perhaps where she goes to screen for a teammate and then she gets the ball with defenders on the move and she can attack the space that's created. So massive stats there for Erie McDonald. She gets her team out to a six point lead now. And now seven points up. Each point so crucial. In this contest, Spirit now in the bonus. Kelly Wilson gets going herself. And that's what Kelly Wilson does in clutch moments. Need her to stay aggressive and she's a great pull-up shooter around that free throw line. Clinch Hoycard. Atwell. Foul called. Wilson commits it. It will send Atwell to the line. Three minutes, 53 left in this game. Amy Atwell hasn't quite been her night, but she's kept at it. Three points so far, one from seven from the field. She's always alive, Amy Atwell. And always a looming threat. So, you know, I use the word gravity that people have. She has a lot of gravity on the three-point line, so her defender has to play a whole lot tighter to her, which allows you to play four on four with more space, which is exactly what Erin McDonald would want, more room to operate. So Kraka now into Wilson. Ali Wilson. Bendigo would love a bucket here. Ali Wilson hopes to provide it. Instead, Maley collects the rebound. Gets it off to McDonald. Scored the highest amount of points in a game for any player this season. Our first 30 points of WNBL 23-24. Gorman into Atwell. Guarded closely by Wilson. Shoves her off. Offensive foul. Ali Wilson hits the deck. Chance for the Spirit to get back into this one. Great D there by Ali Wilson. Seven points, three from 16 from the field. She's keeping herself alive with her defense. Six rebounds and five assists. Three minutes, 11 seconds left in this game. Bendigo yet to record a win in WNBL 23-24. This next basket is going to be a big one, whoever scores it. It's going to do a lot for the momentum leading into this last three minutes. Kraka, it's in capable hands for Bendigo. Mailey equally up to the task on defense. Wehrung shoves the defender out of the way. Heads to the line for a couple. And safe hands with Abby Wehrung going to her left. Tough to stop because she hits a top speed really quickly too and she plays through contact. So now she gets herself on the free throw line, gets two shots at a high percentage uh, as a, a free throw shooter. Chance to put the spirit within five. 14 points on our 15 points for the game for Wear Run. I believe it's a 10th WNBL season 
Fourth with Bendigo. Misses the second free throw, but luckily Bendigo get the rebound. Dumps it into Froling. Guarded by Maley. Froling can't get it to go. Atwell's there for the boards. But gave themselves an, another chance at it with the possession play. They've got to continue to go relentlessly at the offensive glass in this last two minutes. Oh, Maley left open. That's not going to help the spirit. Only Maley full of class, though. Kraka needs to move quickly now. Just over two minutes for the Spirit to will themselves to a win. Wilson delivers. Harry McDonald now. 81 playing 75. Just over two minutes to play in this contest. Perth looking to go three from three to start this season. Maley looking for that double-double of her own. And we'll head to the line for a couple. And smart read by Crocker to give Maley a little bit of a gap early. Like, bait her to shoot the three-point shot, which she didn't. The trouble was, as soon as Maley put the afterburners on, put two hands on Maley to try and hold up the drive. Finally, Maley. Nine points, 14 rebounds. And this is the first free throw. Both teams now in the bonus, so we might see a few free throws in this last patch of the game. As Maley converts the second. And this timeout will be crucial for each team here. Mark Elabakov, 82, playing 75, a minute 51. The Spirit have got to give it all here. They do, and they get an opportunity now out of this timeout to be able to diagram a play. So the Perth Lynx have done a tremendous job of being able to change their defense coming out of timeouts like this to try to blow up whatever uh, the Bendigo Spirit are intending to run. So if you're Bendigo, you're probably anticipating some of that. So you're probably giving two suggestions. You're going with a primary look uh, versus perhaps a man-to-man -man defense, but then knowing that the Perth Lynx have come out in a 2-3 zone out of timeouts, you've got to give your team a solution. Like, if it's not uh, this, if it's X, then Y. Um, just so you've got clarity on what you're trying to create in this minute 51. So we see Emily Potter out of the game with five fouls. Clint Choikard's got four of her own. Davis, Kelly Wilson, Crocker, and Ali Wilson all on three. Both teams in the bonus. So he sends free throws might play a bit of a part in this last minute 51. It will. And the Spirit are going to the well, trying to go primarily when they're in the half court inside to Alicia Froling. I think the athlete that's done the best job on her inevitably has been Annalie Maley. The Perth Lynx could afford to go, quote unquote, small um, and have Mila Goodchild come in for Mackenzie clinch Hoycard. Then you match up with all of the perimeter players. Annalie Maley can then go to Alicia Froling, who she's been able to bother. Ali Wilson. Looking to keep her team in it. Froling got snatched out of her hands. So have another go at it. The case in point, they've gone straight to Froling out of the timeout. Let's see what they do here. It's with Wehrung from the baseline. Kelly Wilson. Guarded by McDonald. Back to Wehrung. Back to Wilson. Loops it into Froling. Shot clock violation. Just weren't aware of the time there, the spirit. Yeah, and that's the delicate balance that you have with having an intended endpoint, so trying to get the ball into Froling and then being clock aware so that if it doesn't happen organically, is it going to put you in a position where you've got a rush and action late in the clock? Donald happy to use up all the clock on the Perth Lynx end. The team leading by seven. McDonald now puts the after jets on. Maley for three. That one just falls short. And the shot clock expires with the Perth end this time. Look, and an air ball shot, but not the worst result because the ball goes out of bounds. And I keep saying, you know, getting your defense back and set, there's an ad advantage at that because now it forces the Spirit to have to execute in the half court and not get something easy in transition. Time is not on their side. Clock ticks down under a minute. Wilson on the left. Heads to the line for two. And Alex Wilson coming alive, wanting to take control of the basketball. She's done a tremendous job of keeping defenders on her back and releases the contact to go to the rim and try to get finishes. 
it's not the worst thing where both teams are in foul trouble. If you send her to the line, now you force her to have to make two free throws where you know, the Spirit aren't shooting the ball particularly well. They're 13 of 20 from the free throw line, as opposed to giving up a, a wide open layup. Mary McDonald shooting the ball incredibly well. 32 points for her. For all eyes on Ali Wilson. Nine points, five assists. This is another free throw. So it turns out to be a smart foul in the end. And now the Spirit in a position where there's not a, that many possessions left in the game. They're probably going to need to foul to stop this clock. The clock does stop for a timeout this time. Just under 55 seconds left in this game. 82 plays 76. The Lynx still leading the way. And perhaps one last gasp here for Kennedy Kariyama. But what do you think Ryan Petrick's saying to the Lynx right now, Mark? Well, the decision that he has to make with 54 seconds left, uh, you get an opportunity under two minutes to advance the ball into the half court. So if you do that, the shot clock drops to 14 seconds. So you have less time to get a shot off, essentially creating more possessions in the game. Uh, the, the choice that he has is, does he do that, knowing that the spirit may or may not foul um, within that possession, or do you keep the ball at the backcourt and you have a full 24-second shot clock so you get an opportunity to essentially eat up a whole possession's worth of clock um, you know, out of this 54 seconds. I anticipate that he's going to do the latter. So here we go, 55 seconds left in this game. Bendigo winless, Perth full of wins, looking for their third of the season in a row. We've got Southside up next on Wednesday night. Bendigo travel to Melbourne on Sunday to play the Boomers at Parkville. Maylee now to inbound for Perth. And Chibatoni coming in. So you've got all ball handlers and all free throw shooters on the floor for the Perth Lynx. Donald just took a little bit of a tumble. She's thankfully okay. She looks like she's getting on the move. Gliding pass, rolling, and Erin McDonald is doing it all. That's the best case scenario if you're the Perth Lynx. Kelly Wilson now to Ali Wilson. Just needs to fire at every attempt. McDonald, another steal. Up to 34 points. Chibatoni. Perth happy to use all the time on their shot clock. Smart foul there by Wilson. But needed to happen, you know, a full five to seven seconds earlier. Um, there's got to be an urgency to try to win the match. You've got to stop the clock and be able to give yourself the opportunity to have more possessions. I think they waited far too long before initiating that foul. And now the crowd is right behind the Perth Lynx. And it's good to see Ashley Hannon get on the floor for her first minutes of the night. Girl's daughter of Fiona, who won bronze in 1996 with Australia. Alex Gibatoni back in the WNBL after giving birth to her son Elijah. Knocks down the crucial free throws for Perth. Kelly Wilson moving with pace. Foul on the way down. Chloe Forster with some nice defense there. 10-point lead for Perth. Offensive foul from Kelly Wilson. Means her day is done. Six points, six assists. She'll have to wait till Sunday to see if she can climb into second on the all-time assist leaderboard. And great to see another Perth Lynx youngster getting her first minutes tonight, Grace Foster. The Willerton Tigers. Forster. 13 seconds here. For the Lynx, before they go three from three for the season. Forster could grab her own boards. Can't quite put the cherry on top. Rebound here for Ben Nigo. Crocker gets the pass away. But it's a 10 point win for the Perth Lynx in front of their adored, adoring home fans. The Lynx go three from three to start the season and extend their advantage over Bendigo to 13 wins and three losses in their past 16 matchups. What a performance from Perth. They're unstoppable at the moment. Aaron McDonald leading the way with 34 points.
Perth 86, Bendigo 76 from Bendat Basketball Centre. And a wrestle for momentum and the pace of play you know, for both teams. They did a tremendous job of making this a heck of a contest for us to watch. The Perth Lynx being able to impose their style of play on the contest, you know, holistically, you look at 20 fast break points, which is exceptional for a team at this level, and 15 points off turnovers. So we're, you know, they're far stingier defensively than ever before um, under the, uh, the Ryan Petrick regime here in Perth. They create 15 points just by being able to force turnovers out of the spirit. That's 35 points on effort-based plays uh, and playing fast. So their identity holds true. They're able to get themselves over the line and put 86 points on the board. Even when you know we document how much they like to shoot the three-point shot, they only shot at 31%, which you know, is pretty average in this competition. It's, it's what you'd expect from most teams. So they haven't really caught fire from the three-point line yet. But the effort-based stuff has been able to uh, you know, overwhelm teams and just outrun teams over the course of four quarters. And our player of the game, surprise, surprise, is that woman on screen, Airy McDonald. 34 points, 68% from the field, six rebounds and three assists to go with three steals as well, Mark. She was everywhere tonight. She is, and she could even make a case for winning player of the round in the, the competition for three straight weeks. She's had those types of games, but 34 points, it's the most that we've seen anybody score this season. Uh, the most impressive thing, I alluded to it earlier, is they're not forced baskets. They're all within the context of their identity, the context of their offense, like this play here. She's got that explosive change of pace, but then she still makes the right basketball decision. So 34 points, she gets herself a handful of assists as well. But then it's the defense as well. She's got three steals and she's a thief. Um, that last steal late in the game on um, Alicia Froling, knowing that froling has been a focal point and done a heck of a job for the Bendigo Spirit to keep them within touch, she sneaks around and goes and steals the ball. Call the police. She's a thief. <laughs> That's got to be one of the liners of the season from you, Mark. Erin McDonald is a thief. I think she's also in, she might also be making herself a very good case for that Susie Bakovich MVP award as well. Jordan Canada from Melbourne, another candidate. But let's take a look at some highlights from the game. And the fourth quarter in particular was Casey Samuels kicking things off. And for a moment, you thought the spirit were going to get themselves back into it. They'd be ruining this contest a bit, Mark. They were right into it at certain points. But as you mentioned throughout the contest, momentum swings played a massive part tonight. It really did. And I thought that they did a great job of playing through their posts and then competing for possession. They got 17 offensive rebounds. Alicia Froling with seven of them. That's phenomenal. And then you've got four to Alex Wilson, two to Davis, one to Kelly Wilson, uh, and then a single to Casey Samuels as well. But being able to convert those on the scoreboard, so shooting 14 of 22 from the free throw line, I think really hurt them. It didn't allow them to put enough scoreboard pressure on the links, which maybe makes them play a little bit differently if the, the game's within touch there. So only the 63% from the free throw line. Um, and then getting extra points where it's just effort-based stuff, perhaps in transition. So you know, when you design a way to win, you design a way to lose. So adding all of the size and the competitiveness with the physicality, they didn't get enough, I don't think, tonight on their fast break play. Only the five points compared to the 20 that came from Perth's direction. We've spoken about the stats a lot tonight. Here is the summary of what went on. It wasn't a good night in the free throw column in particular for the Spirit. Three pointers are pretty even in the end. Field goals uh, percentage as we talked about was pretty low for both teams but in the end Perth getting the job done. Yeah, and a mature win for the Lynx as well. So they've been able to get themselves 15 as an average, more shot attempts than their opponent. The Spirit actually had four more shot attempts than them. So what that does is it, it steers you towards the efficiency that they've been able to play with uh, and make sure the opportunities that they create for themselves, they're knocking down. A whole suite of games to come this round as well. A big double header tomorrow night. Adelaide hosting Southside and then Townsville taking on Canberra and on Sunday Bendigo have to suit up again lick their wounds pretty quickly because they come up against Melbourne who are also undefeated so it doesn't get any easier for the spirit let's see if they can bounce back and look out for Kelly Wilson chasing down Christy Harawa who's an assistant coach with the Boomers for that second place on the assist leaderboard the all-time assist leaderboard in fact we thank you for joining us on Nine Now tonight. We hope you enjoy the coverage at the end of four action-packed quarters. It was Perth getting the win over Bendigo by 10 points. 86 up against 76. On behalf of Julia Montesano, Mark Ellabakov and our amazing production team, we hope you have a great night and we'll see you tomorrow.